Welcome to Productivity in Real Life, where we talk all about your favorite productivity applications like Todoist. Of course, we also talk other productivity applications like Evernote, Bear, Notion, Microsoft To Do, OneNote, and of course, so many more. In our talk about these applications, we give you real world examples of using these apps instead of just running through a few quick theories on how they should be used. So you get some working ideas of how to best use these apps in your own work and home environments. Today, let's jump over to our current favorite task application, which is Todoist. Generally, I run most of my tasks out of Evernote, uh, but a few months ago, I did give Todoist a spin to see how well it would work in my current task and project management style to complement what I do in Evernote. Since then, I've been using Todoist pretty much daily for many of the tasks and simple project ideas I have. It does have some drawbacks, and I'll briefly touch on that in this video, and we'll elaborate more on those drawbacks, and of course the, the pros of using Todoist as well in a future video. But let's, for now, jump over to Todoist, and I'll show you how I use it to research my choice in this case, to buy a new smartwatch. Track the order and of course plan for what apps and features I want to be doing with my new watch once I receive it. And you might think a uh, smartwatch choice is pretty cut and dry, pretty simple. Go to the store, buy it, go home, set it up and away you go. Uh, and, and yes, but in all honesty, it you do go through a phase of planning different tasks to that. It is it is as simple as I just described to a certain degree, but perhaps you want to break that down. You've got a budget to work with. Perhaps you've got a certain smartphone that you need to use the smartwatch with, or perhaps you've got options in that regard. So you need to choose which smartwatch you want to get. Perhaps you've got different needs in a smartwatch and it's more fitness oriented. Perhaps it's more rugged oriented. Uh, you know, who knows what the choice, what choices you may want to go through. And that's why, in my case here, I've set up a mini project in Todoist to get that all figured out for me. So, what I do in Todoist, how I use Todoist, is I have a mixed method of both tasks and project planning. I'll have context tags like a lot of you already know about. Um, someday where tags, um, different types of when tags, two minute task type tags, assigned to others, things I'm waiting on, do this week, do next month, that sort of thing. And those are my, some of my popular context tags, or not so popular in, in other cases. But, like I said, I have a mixed method, so a lot of my tasks are within projects that don't necessarily get a context tag. They may be something I can work on anywhere at any time, uh, or maybe they're a project that I know where I have to work on it, and I don't need the context tags assigned to those tasks. So, that's, that's how I do it, is a mixed method of context tags and active projects. What you can see here is a stack, or what I'll call a stack, of different projects. So I've got active projects, personal projects, work projects, home projects, fitness projects, and a few other random things here. Different things under fitness, home, work, personal, and of course my active projects, where my smartwatch project sits. And this is, of course, the first step for you as well in setting up a project in Todoist, is create a project. You can lump it under active, create a stack called active projects if you want. That's just what I do to keep the list organized because projects, I've got a few of them here that are active. Personal, I've got a selection in here. Work, I've got another probably two dozen projects in there. Home, there's a stack. So it's nice to be able to just close these up and keep things neat and tidy and organized. So you'll want to create a project, lump it under active projects if that's how you so choose to do it. So in my case here, I've just created a, a project file called SmartWatch. 
inside that I will set up Todoist sections which you can just use the three dots up in the top and add a section just like so name this section and we can move it around to prioritize it there we go test section anyway I'm getting ahead of myself here once you've got a section or a, a project set up as I come across information throughout the day that belongs in a project it'll typically end up in my Todoist inbox which you've got one of these as well if you're working in Todoist it may get dumped in there copy and pasted off of uh, another website it might get directly typed in there just by add a task just like so it may get shared into there from working on my iPhone or an iPad or an Android device there's a multitude of ways to get information into Todoist and that's one of the things I really like about Todoist is the variety of ways I can dump information in there I can email it into there I've got triggers set up in Evernote so if I'm working on a certain Evernote note I can tag it as Todoist and away it comes into my Todoist file but for the most part all of that information comes into the inbox so the next step you've got your project set up you want to get your information out of your inbox and organized as quickly as you can you can drag and drop or you can hold down the control key on Windows and select multiple tasks to move all at once just go up here move to project and scroll down to smartwatch or you could start typing Oops. You do it this way you can select a section to move all those into these are belong in different sections in our project so we're just going to put them as no section and we'll sort them later so jumping into the project itself here's our unsorted tasks some of those that we just moved in there like you saw here's our test task that we just typed in we don't need it so we're just gonna mark it as complete I know that messes with Todoist Karma if you're a, a user of Todoist Karma or you like watching your your workflow I don't bother with it I don't think it holds much value so I really don't pay attention to my Karma at all um, so anyway test task I just marked it as complete just to get it out of there there's pros and cons of course to everything and there's a pro and a con to just marking it as complete as opposed to going over to our dots and going down and deleting it uh, it was a junk task so really I should have deleted it it doesn't have merit to marking it complete but we get it out of the way quick and simple by marking it complete this tests test section I'm gonna do the same thing and just delete it because we're not going to use it for our example so now in a project you've got a variety of things in here you've got a variety of your sections set up in my case pre-purchase I wasn't sure what smartwatch to get I've got both iPhone and Android devices so I had choices to make and I had a variety of videos in here and a variety of pricing options and a variety of different smartwatches listed let's just put it at that way and I finally got it narrowed down and I think you can probably tell which one I've got on order so pre-purchase research we've got different apps that I've been looking at that I want to get we can close all these down general apps productivity apps of course different settings that I want to make sure I pay attention to not having used an Apple watch before there's different settings I thought okay I'll just do a little bit of quick research find some videos that I want to bookmark and watch once I get this thing and of course accessories different watch straps and rugged cases and chargers and all that fun stuff different sections so our inbox of tasks that we've brought from our main to-doist inbox 
over into the project, what I call the inbox. They're basically unsorted, not in a section. So now we just need to review these and figure out where they've got to go. This one's about fitness. We'll drop that into the fitness section and we've got to open that up. Fitness, drag and drop, done. Pre-purchase, let's just open these all up again to make it quick and easy to drop things where they need to be. Apple Watch tips, this is just general. So I'm going to put it under settings. It may not be settings, but that's where it's going to go for now. More tips. Again, drop it under settings. First things to do. I'm going to put it under settings, but I'm going to put it at the start of settings because when I first get the watch, I'm going to pay attention to this video and set up according to that. And Apple Watch Complete Beginner's Guide. So again, that is going to go at the start of my settings because I want to prioritize it. We can also go into here, prioritize. We're going to give it a priority one, and we're going to give this one a priority one as well. because I want to be sure to look at those first. Same with some of our apps. I want to make sure I get Evernote and Todoist, assuming they have Apple Watch apps, and I believe they do, onto the Apple Watch first and foremost. Foremost, Some general apps here. Um, I don't have any priority assigned to those because those aren't really high on the priority list. Fitness is a big thing for me, so I want to make sure I'm getting off to the right foot with fitness tracking. And we got one more thing up in our inbox to deal with. And again, it's just general, so we're going to put it down under settings as well. So that's it. I've got all my notes out of there. Actually, there's one more thing. I'm just going to jump into email right here. Use my Todoist plugin and send this off to Todoist so that I can track my order. It's going into Smartwatch. We'll leave it as order update. We're going to put it as a priority one and we're going to actually give it a date. Um, I'm not going to give it a date here because it doesn't let me do smart input. So we're just going to add the task, put it under Smartwatch and we'll adjust the date once it gets there. There it is already. This is our order update. And what I want to do is make a note to look at this on Friday because that's when it's supposed to be there. We'll put it into pre-purchase. I mean, I've already made the purchase, so technically it's not pre-purchase either, but we'll leave it there. We can go into the task and it will load up my email in Gmail where I can do a one click and track the order status. It's also marked to look at on Friday. So I will get a reminder on Friday to look at this task and see where my smart smartwatch actually is. So you've seen I've been able to drag and drop tasks within the project. We can do the same thing with sections. I'm just going to move my productivity section up a notch because next to fitness, productivity on the smartwatch is important, whereas seeing what the weather is, not important, not as important. You can see we can drag and drop individual tasks, we can drag and drop our sections, and I do do my sections typically in a chronological order of the project. In a perfect project, all of these tasks would be done before I would move into the next section and so on. In the case of this smartwatch thing, it's a little more dynamic, so we have our pre-purchase section that, yes, is typically done before moving into the rest. 
but I have information flowing into the project, so I've got the different sections already here and set up and being organized as we go. Of course, there won't be anything that gets checked on these really until the smartwatch is here and it's being set up. Some things are already done in accessory purchases, so those have been checked off and done and cleared out of Todoist. Once all the tasks are done in the entire project, I would come over here to the project itself, the three dots, and then we can archive the project, gets it out of sight, out of mind, and uh, then you're ready to move on to your next project. So this is an example of working with Todoist and how I use it for simple project planning. I don't get overly complicated with the projects that I use within Todoist itself as it does lack a few features for significant project work. But we'll touch on that in another episode of Productivity in Real Life and our Working with Todoist series. Be sure to like, subscribe, and of course share this video if it was helpful. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments down below. If you've got some great ideas for project planning in Todoist, feel free to share as well.